Hello, everyone. Uh, this is my second lecture, lecture 2.1. In this lecture, I will uh, introduce uh, the basics of the Bayesian, Bayesian statistics because from the last lecture, uh, I have mentioned that in the phase one trials design and especially in early phases clinical trial design, uh, many uh, developed methods uh, are using uh, a lot of the Bayesian statistics. So in this modern clinical trial design lecture series, I will have a mini lecture uh, about the foundation of the base. And uh, this will not cover uh, the very comprehensive of this topic. Uh, in the future, if uh, the artists show interest, I will also develop the whole uh, lecture for the Bayesian statistics. Okay. And this is today's uh, uh, contents. I will introduce what is the classical methods, that is uh, frequentist methods, and what is the Bayesian methods. And I also will talk a little about uh, what is exchangeability and the definity theorem, and also give an example of using the basket trial to show what is exchangeability uh, and why it is important uh, for the clinical trial design. Okay, let's go to our first content. And uh, we know that the Bayesian statistics inferences uh, use the base theorem to combine prior information and the sample data to make conclusions about a parameter of interest or vector of parameter of interest. Uh, we, 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 already, we already know maybe that for the uh, classical methods or the frequentist methods, we basically uh, are just using the sample data to make inference. Uh, and uh, this kind of sample data, we basically just uh, uh, use the likelihood function to, to represent information of the sample data. But for the Bayesian, except uh, instead of just using the sample data, we also use the prior information. So this is the first big differences. And uh, okay, and another thing is that the Bayesian inferences differ from a classical inference uh, because uh, the Bayesian also specifies a probability distribution for our interested uh, parameters. Uh, uh, here, I just want to talk a little bit in detail. Uh, for the classical methods, for the unknown parameter, we think it is unknown, but uh, we don't think it is random. We only regard this unknown as an unknown constant or constant. And we want to using our data to infer, okay, what is the uh, what is about this unknown parameter? For example, we want to find what is the point estimate for this parameter? What is the confidence interval for this parameter, right? We, we, we think that this is unknown, but this is an unknown constant we want to um, estimate. But from the Bayesian uh, point of view, uh, the philosophical point of view is different. For the Bayesian, Bayesian think that uh, all unknown parameters uh, is a random variable because uh, Bayesian thinks that if it is unknown, we should, uh, how we describe the unknown? Because unknown, it means that it can uh, take all kinds of values, right? But the only difference is that some values uh, we have a high probability and some values have low probability to achieve or to take. So for the Bayesian, unknown parameter, the best way to describe the unknown things is to using the random variable, this kind of uh, paradigm. And for the random variable, the best way to, to represent it is to use the probability distribution. So this is a very big differences between a Bayesian and the classical methods. They treat the parameters from different uh, philosophical point of view. Okay, so so why use the Bayesian methods? Some reasons. We have also talked about little about this before uh, 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 a short moment ago. So the first reason is that many times we wish to specifically incorporate previous knowledge we have about the parameter of interest, right? Because uh, for the classical methods, uh, we will uh, 
we cannot have a formal way to incorporate this kind of prior information or pre previous knowledge, but in the Bayesian we can. We will show in the base Bayesian formula uh, later lecture in later lecture. Okay. So why it is important? Because for many kind of things that we already have the previous knowledge. For example, uh, in pediatric cancer uh, study, we know that for every pediatric cancer study, for example, a drug, this drug um, ordinarily has been done for the adult population. That means, for example, for the MTD maximum target dose funding, and. Uh, uh, for the adult patients, we already have established MTD, okay? And, uh, and also based on literatures, the MTDs for the adult and MTD for the pediatric, they are highly correlated. So, so this means that if we already have adult information for this drug, we, we shouldn't just ignore this kind of information, information. This is very important. We should intelligently to use this information, help us. Uh, uh, define or incorporate this kind of information into the pediatric drug development. So this is uh, the first reason why we want to use innovation. And the patient, she can formally incorporate the prior or previous knowledge into our uh, model, into our inference uh, development. And the second one is to the patient, she can uh, update our knowledge of the parameter after observing sample data. So this this we will uh, look at uh, very shortly in in the next uh, next uh, lecture. This means that uh, uh, the patient can have a mechanism to update our knowledge based on the cumulative uh, information. This is very important because from our first lecture of the phase one trials, we know that the phase one trials is essentially a sequence of uh, decision making, and we based on each cohort patient's information. To, to, to do some more wisely uh, decisions. So this is basically another kind of thing that we should have a formal mechanism to update our knowledge, knowledge. So the patient can do these kind of things. And uh, the third one is to the patient, she can make formal probability statements about the parameter interest. So this is, we just uh, talked about it uh, a moment ago. And the patient, because she thinks uh, the unknown parameters should to be a uh, ran random variable. So we have more ambitious goal of using the Bayesian. We don't just want to estimate the point estimate uh, or the, 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 the confidence interval CI. We want to estimate a, a distribution for our unknown parameter because we know that if we have the knowledge of the distribution of unknown parameter of, of a random variable, we already know everything. Because for example, if we know that, okay, this parameter is follow a normal distribution. Uh, so what is uh, hey, its uh, point estimate? So it's based on what do you mean by point estimate? If you mean by mean, because you already know it follows a normal distribution, we can take expectation, right? To, to have the mean estimate. If we, we mean by the, the, the median value, we can just, 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 take just to compute the median value. And if you want to see that, okay, so what about this uh, unknown parameter? It, 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 if it is greater than 0.5, so because you already know this parameter's distribution, you can very easily to compute this probability using the integration. So this is the uh, biggest three uh, reasons why we want to use innovation. Okay, so the motivation for Bayesian modeling this is another we just emphasize again, Bayesian trait on observed data and unknown parameter in similar way. Yeah, she treats all kind of unknown things as a random variable. And they describe each, right, using a uh, probability dist distribution. Okay, so conceptually, Bayesian uh, specify two things. The first thing, uh, uh, the Bayesian should specify a joint density function. So which describes a form of distribution of the full sample of data. Okay, so this is just exactly the same to the frequentist or classical methods. So using the um, sample, using the data, and the data uh, can be uh, translated into 
a joint PDF, a joint uh, density function, right? And another thing is that we uh, should assume a prior distribution or using our knowledge, using some techniques to summarize the, the previous knowledge into a prior distribution. This just describes the behavior of parameters, but unconditional on the data because it's prior to our study. We have some previous knowledge, okay? And uh, now we have some basic ideas what is the Bayesian is above and uh, currently, and here I, I want to introduce a very important term, it's called the exchangeability. Um, we know that in our classical methods, for, for many kind of things, we should assume the independent, this kind of assumption for the data. And uh, many, many, I, I want to say that almost all kinds of the methods uh, just based on this assumption, independence or independent. Uh, for the patient, so what is the, it's, it's assumption? Assumption is called exchangeable. So what is means by exchangeable? Exchangeable means that re reordering of the data value doesn't change the model. So what does it mean specifically? For example, in a social survey, uh, responders uh, asked whether they are generally happy or not. Uh, so this is the ICE uh, responders, uh, why I, it's, uh, it's uh, answers. If the responder I uh, say he is happy, uh, we just uh, assign a value one to his answer. Otherwise, we assign a value zero uh, to his answer. Okay, for example, we have the first five respondents and uh, here is just uh, uh, the, the results, the outcomes, right, by these five responders. We can see that for these kind of things, we have basically three people say they are happy and the two people say they are not happy. So, so what do you think about this kind of three probabilities? So we think it's, so it is the same thing or not the same thing if they are equivalent or not equivalent. So we can see that if the data values are exchangeable, that means the ordinary of the sequence of these responses are, in, are, are unimportant we call they are exchangeable. So if this exchangeable, these three outcomes will have the same probability, right? Okay, so this exchangeable. So we want to talk about what is the relationship between exchangeability and IID. IID means independent and identically distributed IID. Okay, so here is a very important theorem, just a link the exchangeability and IID. This theorem is just read really like, really like this. If the data are IID and the given theta, if the data are given theta are IID, okay, and the theta follow the distribution uh, P theta, then the data are exchangeable. So before we give the uh, proof for this theorem, we can see that this means that if the data given theta are IID, we can just uh, uh, infer that the data is exchangeable. So, so this means that IID is a stricter assumption uh, than the exchangeable. So we know that if the assumption is weaker, we have more broader application in real practices, right? So from this kind of things, we have a very general idea that the patient has a more weaker, have the more gen weaker uh, restriction uh, in use uh, in the real practices. That means have more generable general uh, usage uh, than the IID assumption. Okay, here we uh, look at the proof. Mm, we uh, denote the Y1 to Yn be IID given theta. Okay, theta is follow P theta. And we consider any permutation of pi. Okay, permutation of pi means that we can just reordinate the sequence of these kind of things. It's still the one to n, but the ordinary is just uh, a different, uh, okay then for any y1 to yn. So this is a joint uh, probability, right? And okay, we can write like this. So this is a basic, basically, it's just we taken theta, but we uh, just uh, integrate other theta. So this is means, this is just the same equivalent, right? This we also can regard as like conditional probability. It's p1, uh, p1 to uh, y1 to yn theta and uh, divided by P theta and the P theta, P theta just cancel and we just integrate theta out, right? So this just gets this. Okay, so this uh, equivalent, 
they are just equal to each other. Okay, and the second uh, equal sign, why it is like this? Because our assumption is that uh, yn to yn is iid given theta. So we can just uh, uh, just uh, uh, take, take the multiplication of, of this joint uh, distribution. We can just decomp decompose the joint distribution into into a marginal distribution, right? PDF of this y on y on given theta. Okay, and then and then because the y i y one to y n are independent given theta, so we can just reordinary. So for example, we can times because p one times p two times p three is equal to p three times p two p p one times p two, right? So this we reordinary is just no problem. And if we look at this. This we just cancel this uh, p theta and integrate the theta out. We get this. So we from this equal to this. So this means that y and y are exchangeable, right? So the ordinary is doesn't um, spoil the, the 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 model. So we just uh, uh, prove this theorem. Okay. Another very important theorem is definity theorem. So. This theorem just shows that the converse is also true. So what it does means? This means if y1 to yn are exchangeable for all n, okay. So we must can show that we can we can have a theta, and given theta y1 to y1 are iid. So this is a very how to say the the philosophical level is very deep. So it is means that if y1 to yn are are exchangeable. From our world, we can imagine we must can find a theta. We don't know what is theta, but we must kind of find a theta. Theta is a kind of mysterious mechanism, okay, behind the scene. Okay, we can we must can have a kind of theta. And given this theta, y1 to y1 are just iid. Okay, we will show later why it is important because it gives us very flexibility to using this kind of latent imaginary thinking uh, to, to, to so from another thing that we know that uh, in the real world, no, no things are independent essentially, just uh, how strong and how weak the relationship between each other, right? And uh, we must have, must can have found a link. This link is called theta. And given this theta, uh, our interested data, observation, et cetera, or parameters are independent. If independent ID, we can use in our established mature methods to, 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 to do inference, to make the decision, right? So this is the biggest uh, rationale uh, for, for this theorem. Okay, so this is uh, my last slides for today's lecture. So, I want to introduce uh, two examples. First example is basket trial, uh, and how this trial concept is related to exchangeability. So this is uh, finger A. Finger A, so we want to show what is basket trials. So for example, we can see that, so here is all patients with a particular genetic mutation, right? So this means that, uh, because we know that for, for many diseases, the lung cancer, the carcinoma, the melanoma. Yeah, sometimes they just uh, have a common genetic mutation, for example, EGHR. Okay, so this is basically like things. Okay, for disease A, disease B, disease F, et cetera. Yeah, they, they can show that they have a common uh, mutation, right? Okay, common genetic mutation. And we currently have a drug, okay? We use this drug is just uh, uh, developed for 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 this kind of genetic mutation. We can use this, using this drug to treat to, to treat different kind of cancer disease. For example, we can just put we can have a develop a protocol and put all these kind of disease into a basket. Right? We can together to have this kind of uh, big trial in one protocol. So this can save a lot of. Uh, operational things, uh, the, the, the protocol development things, and many, many kind of things. We also can sometimes uh, borrow information across the different diseases because they come from uh, a same mutation they treated by uh, 
uh, same drug. Okay. Okay, here we just translate it into our model. For example, Y1 to YG, we have G disease, right? And each disease uh, should have different kind of response rate or efficacy rate, right? But we already know that for each for different disease, they have a, a common uh, mutation, genetic mutation, and we have using one drug to treat all kinds of disease, right? So, so we, we just using our just talk about the before that we have imaginary latent kind of things to link them together. This we call the theta, right? Common theta. We don't know theta, but we know that they must have some link to this because the different disease treated by uh, different, uh, they treated by one drug. Okay, so we can, this is a Bayesian hierarchy model. And the Y1 to YG, of course, are not, uh, of, of course, yeah. And, but we, if we have this kind of theta, if Y1 to YG given this theta, we can link them together. We can share information together. And we can assume that, okay, given this, they are independent. Otherwise, they are not independent, right? So this is basically uh, this kind of example. Another example is a kind of uh, physiological response. We just want to show when we should uh, assume the exchangeability and when it's not. Suppose x1 to xn are real valued mirrors of a specific uh, physiological response in human subjects. When a particular drug is, is administrated, if the drug is administrated at more than one dose level, okay, we have more than one, we have different dose levels. It's the first thing. And if they are male and female participants, okay, they have different uh, gender, right? From different ethnic groups, for like Caucasian, Asian, uh, black people. Okay, so for these kind of things, do you want to assume exchangeability for the entire uh, subjects? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, because they are uh, very different things, right? But of course, if you also can think uh, imaginary things uh, behind that, given that you can assume, but just simply, you, you simply you just uh, cannot assume they are exchangeability, exchangeable. Okay, however, within each combination of those level sex and ethic group, we can assume the assumption of ex exchangeability. Right, because just for the very specific subgroup, they are exchangeable. You can think, okay, like the ID or something, but otherwise you cannot just simply plainly assume the exchangeability. But of course, you can find some common link, and given that link, you can assume the exchangeability. So this is a, a two example. I just think want to you think it's reasonable, and and also can enhance your understanding of exchangeability. So this is a reference for these slides, uh, the FDA guideline, and also I use the example here. I also use some slides from uh, these uh, teaching slides. Okay, thank you. And uh, next time uh, I will talk about the Bayesian formula uh, in a very uh, formal way. Okay, thank you uh, very much.